Within the little-traveled interior of Iceland, after a several-hour-long drive on what could barely pass as a road is a magnificent volcano. At this volcano are a series of lava flows stretching for as far as the eye can see, a massive caldera with a crater lake, and beautiful flat-top features known as toyas. All of these beautiful features can be found at the volcano known as Askia. It produced one of the largest volcanic eruptions in the history of Iceland in 1875, and today is showing signs of unrest as an intrusion of magma is occurring three kilometers underneath its edifice. From satellite, the most obvious feature in this volcanic complex is its large lake-filled caldera which measures four and a half kilometers wide. However, if you zoom out, there is an even larger caldera present. In total, this complex contains three calderas, each of which formed an incredibly large volume explosive eruptions. However, the group of three partially overlapping calderas are not the entirety of this volcano. The Askia volcano also contains a network of smaller shield volcanoes, tuff rings, spatter cones, and fissures which are all emplaced along a 100 km long chain of activity. This chain of activity is known as the Northern Volcanic Zone and signals a divergent plate boundary where the Eurasian plate is spreading apart from the North American plate. This movement creates a series of faults and fractures in the crust from which the underlying hotspot injects new magma into the crust, eventually forming a chain of volcanoes. The Askia volcano began forming approximately 200,000 years ago when a volume of basaltic lava intruded into one of these faults in the crust. Initially, it created a chain of spatter cones in a manner similar to the 2021 eruption of Geldinga Dollar. However, this eruption was a bit more explosive due to the relatively higher gas content contained in the magma. Eventually, several of the spatter cones merged into a single large shield volcano which would later become the center of Askia's activity. Over tens of thousands of years, a large shield volcano was constructed at this center. However, during this time span, a volume of magma deep in the crust had been leaching material from the surrounding crust, slowly becoming more silica-rich. Eventually, this magma transitioned to a highly explosive composition matching rhyolite. A subsequent episode of intense rifting triggered a batch of underlying basaltic magma to intrude into the rhyolite, which caused an immense amount of pressure to build. Then, a planning and eruption began on the surface as a column of ash was ejected more than 35 kilometers into the atmosphere. After several cubic kilometers of rock were ejected, a 4.3 kilometer wide section of the volcano collapsed downwards, forming a large caldera. Although the climate of the planet was still quite similar to its modern counterpart at the time of this eruption, it was not long until glaciers swept across the landscape and buried this volcano in more than a kilometer thick of ice. For more than 80% of Askia's lifespan, it was located underneath a thick ice sheet which caused the nature of its eruptions to change. Subglacial eruptions are generally not able to move very far horizontally, which results in the creation of very steep volcanic cliffs. As erupting lava interacts with the overlying glacier, explosions occur, causing the lava to violently fragment into many little pieces. After the eruption ends, glacial movement and subglacial runoff moves the brecciated material, distributing what is known as a hyaloclastite rock. A large section of this hyaloclastite can be found to the east of its recent caldera, which measures more than 300 meters thick in some locations. After the glaciers retreated, crustal pressure was released, which triggered the volcano's largest explosive eruption in 8910 BC. This eruption created a 10 kilometer wide caldera. In the thousands of years following this eruption, lavas refilled the drought block within the caldera. Then, in 1875, another highly explosive eruption occurred, forming the modern crater lake-filled smaller caldera. This eruption also created a mar known as Viti, which today contains a popular hot spring where waters are always between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius. Although the ongoing intrusion of magma is occurring underneath the caldera, if it were to erupt, it would most likely cause a small flank eruption on the edge of the caldera. Such an eruption would only be moderately explosive and cover several square kilometers of land and lava. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank my new patron Larry Lowe for supporting this channel.